by custom, by tradition, by training. Every Marine is a rifleman, proficient in the use of hand weapons. Each Marine has confidence in his weapon and in his ability to use it. It's a confidence born of many hours of care, many hours of instruction, many hours of experience. In furtherance of the Marine Marksmanship Program, mass shooting teams enter shooting competitions held all over the country. In 1960, Captain W. W. McMillan of the Marine Match Pistol Team reached the finals of the Olympic Games competition. In Rome were assembled the best pistol shots in the world to compete for individual as well as national honors. At the Olympic Stadium, flags of all nations, large and small, and from both sides of the Iron Curtain. Rules of the competition are rigid. Each contestant feels the weight of tensions unlike those he has ever felt before. For the Olympic contest, we'll single out the one best athlete in the world from each field. When all the scores are in, the winner of the international pistol matches is Captain McMillan. The Olympic gold medal, symbol of the world's best amateur performance. And here is Captain McMillan to tell us how he approaches a shooting match. Shooting matches are won or lost by scores made in offhand firing. Without proper support for the weapon, even the steadiest shooter is going to find his sights wavering off the target. The trick is to control the wavering, to be on target at the instant of firing. This control is especially important in pistol shooting, where every shot is from the offhand position. Personally, I find that when my groups are spread in a pistol match, it's because I fouled up on one of the basic fundamentals. Let me show you what I mean. This is Lance Corporal Stump, a Marine instructor at the Quantico firing range. He's going to demonstrate some of the traps that even expert shooters fall into, so that we can see how important it is to stick to the fundamentals. First, the grip and stance. This is a bad beginning. Taking a grip with one hand is getting off on the wrong foot. It leads to a loose grip. The pistol is not well seated in the hand. The thumb is too low on the grip. A loose arm and wrist. Add these things together and this is what you get. Instability. Instability is just another word for low score. Stability begins down here on the ground with correct position. Here, the shooter is doing everything wrong feet too close together and facing toward the target. His weight is on the rear foot. He doesn't know what to do with that left arm. The target's in no danger from this shooter. If you can't hold on it, you're not going to hit it. You rarely find such a bad example as the Lance Corporal has just demonstrated. We've exaggerated to make our point. Now let's have Lance Corporal Stump show us the right way. A good grip starts with using both hands. It's the only way to get the pistol well seated, tightly clamped between thumb and fingers. As in golf, the correct grip feels slightly awkward in the beginning. Practice is the answer. The grip is tight, just below the trembling point. The grip is with the three lower fingers and the thumb. The trigger finger is firm against the side of the receiver. The thumb is as high on the grip as feels comfortable. The higher, the better. It should never be lower than the trigger finger. Wrist and elbow locked in a straight line back to the shoulder. Here is stability. Feet well spread, at least shoulder width. The corporal is facing away from the target. This keeps his head, shoulder, and arm in the straight line we just saw. 
For slow fire shooting, weight is evenly distributed on both feet. In rapid fire shooting, weight is shifted forward for quicker recovery after recoil. Left arm relaxed and out of the way. Correct grip, correct stance. These are a prerequisite for high scores. Of course, every shooter will make his own small personal variations so that he feels right when he's on the firing line. Here's one major variation in the grip when you're firing the revolver. You have to move the thumb to the rear so that you can cock the hammer between rounds. This moves your hand around to the side, as you can see. This affects the stability of your grip, but it's the only way you can handle the hammer. Incidentally, one of the personal variations I mentioned before is the way you doctor up your grips. I use ordinary adhesive tape on my revolver. Sticky side out for a tighter grip. I rough on the automatic pistols with punch marks and carborundum. Again, for a solid, firm grip. Grip and stance give us the stability needed to hit the target. Next, we need to combine target, front sight, rear sight, and eye into the kind of sight picture that means bullseyes. This is the picture we'd like to see over open pistol sights. The front blade is centered in the notch of the rear sight and flush with its top. The bullseye just touching the top of the front blade. But this is how it actually looks. Our eyes can't focus on all three points at the same time. There's only one way to overcome this problem of eye focus, practice. Lots of shooting, lots of snapping in. Snapping in is especially viable because you can make dry runs almost any time, anywhere. At the same time, this kind of practice will do wonders for the critical area of trigger control. Here's what trigger control means to me. First, breathing. I like to fill my lungs, then hold about half of the last breath. At the same time, I consciously try to relax. As I'm aligning my sights, I begin preparing to take up the trigger slack. As soon as the sights are aligned, I get rid of all the slack and begin taking up the trigger weight. It's impossible not to waver off the target. When I do, I hold the pressure I've taken up until I'm back with the right sight picture. If I can't get off the shot within eight seconds, I quit and start over. After about eight seconds of concentration and breath holding, your pulse begins to pound enough to throw the shot off and vision is affected too. Now I'll run off a string of five rounds and try to tie all of these things together. Looks good. Should have saved those for my next match. Trigger control is especially important during rapid fire shooting. Here's a four second string at the same kind of target we used at the Olympic Games. This is the Olympic Games target, the kind we were firing at in Rome. Hitting any kind of target depends on these fundamentals, a grip, and stance that give good stability, the kind of trigger control that lets you anticipate the moment of firing, and of course a sight picture that makes for pinpoint accuracy. I use these fancy shots in teaching at the Marine Range to emphasize these fundamentals.
I'd like to end on this note. We're all individuals. We can't be exactly alike. So in shooting, we all have our personal variations. This is fine. As long as we keep our stability, our sight alignment, and our trigger control. Here's a demonstration of what I mean. I'll vary from the standard procedure by using this diamond ring as a mirror. The diamond ring shot is an example of how much you can vary from the standard shooting position and still hit the target. The ring serves as a mirror for lining up the sights as I shoot over my shoulder. But I'm still concentrating on those fundamentals, stability, sight alignment, and trigger control. This is Marine Corps marksmanship training. Working every day for better scores. Drilling on the fundamentals. Maintaining the Marine Corps tradition of being the world's most effective combat force. It does not bring an Olympic medal to every man. It does help make Marines marksmen. <laughs>